It seems you can't go anywhere these days without hearing about NFTs. With more and more major brands and well-known figures jumping into the space, from McDonald's and Aston Martin to Mark Cuban and Snoop Dogg, NFTs have become one of the most buzzed about topics in crypto. But what is exactly an NFT? That's what I'll try to explain to you in this other episode of your Crypto Capsule Explainer Series. Hope you're ready, because here we go. This episode is brought to you by Crypto.com, where you can buy Bitcoin and over 100 other cryptocurrencies with over 20 different fiat currencies. New users can enjoy 0% credit debit card fees on all crypto purchases made in the first 30 days. Check out the link above to download the Crypto.com app and for more details. Short for non-fungible token, NFTs are digital tokens that are unique and native to the blockchain. Unlike other types of assets, one NFT is not necessarily equivalent to another NFT. This is because of the fact that they are non-fungible. Let's break it down. One Bitcoin is equivalent to any other Bitcoin. Likewise, if I owe you a dollar, I could pay you back with any other dollar. You wouldn't mind as long as one dollar note is similar to any other dollar note. These are what are known as fungible assets and are essentially interchangeable. But non-fungible tokens are a different story entirely. They are completely unique. And the beauty of blockchain technology is we can mathematically prove that. There are tons of examples of every other non-fungible assets. Your house or apartment, for instance, is not the same as a house or other apartment down the street. Similarly, no pieces of art are the same. Now that you know what NFTs are, but how do they work? These tokens use the same underlying properties of blockchain technology to demonstrate ownership, transparency, and even scarcity while allowing that scarcity to be verified and its ownership transferable. These non-fungible tokens have several specific attributes that give them value. First, tradability allows NFTs to be traded on various marketplaces in the same way you can sell an old pack of baseball cards on Craigslist. Second, traceability allows you to ensure that the NFT you want is authentic. Third, immutability allows hard coding of certain variables that will ensure its uniqueness. For example, an NFT can be programmed so that only 1,000 pieces of a certain video game skin will ever be produced. Interoperability allows NFTs to move easily across platforms so they don't get stuck in any one particular ecosystem. Rather, they can be safely moved to someone's digital wallet or marketplace. Liquidity brings more interest and capital to the asset because owners can easily buy and sell them. While NFTs are all the rage these days, it's important to note that these tokens are not an overnight phenomenon. We can trace the rise of this new asset class back to 2017 when CryptoKitties emerged on the Ethereum blockchain. The virtual game allowed users to buy and breed a variety of virtual cats with each cat containing a unique set of characteristics. When the game launched, it was so popular that it single-handedly accounted for 25% of all the traffic on the Ethereum blockchain. So now that you know how NFTs work, why should you care? Simply put, NFTs are revolutionizing the worlds of gaming, collectibles, and increasingly, art. We've seen this on full display with artists and musicians selling their work in digital form directly to global audience without needing to rely on a third party middleman venue like a gallery, a streaming service or an auction house. This is groundbreaking from the creator's perspective as it allows them to retain a significantly higher portion of the proceeds they make from their work. Perhaps the biggest splash in the converging NFT and art roles was when the digital artist known as Beeple sold a JPEG of a montage of digital paintings they has been working on for nearly 15 years for $69 million, a watershed moment for non-fungible tokens. What is unique here is that the piece of art is digitally native, unlike a traditional art where the original would be on a canvas and where you can have digital copies, here the original is digital. And although we can make tons of digital copies or even physical reproductions of that piece, there is only one that is the original NFT. NFTs also become wildly popular in the sports world. A great example is what the NBA has been doing with NBA Top Shop. In fact, NBA Top Shop deserves a lot of credit for driving the NFT discussion so far to the mainstream, attracting a huge number of users and racking up some jaw-dropping sales along the way. The basic gist of the NFT Top Shot is that users can build and compile their own collection of basketball highlights with users purchasing a digital pack of, say, 10 to 50 second long clips from real-world games. One particular Top Shot moment featuring LeBron James' one-handed dunk even sold for over $200,000. In a way, Top Shot's popularity is skyrocketing in tandem with the broader collectibles and memorabilia market with jerseys, shoes, and card sales all spiking in demand. But basketball is not alone. One of my favorite sports, Formula One Racing, 
recently saw the Austin Martin team, which is returning to Formula One after a six year hiatus, launch an exclusive NFT collection on crypto.com, one of the sponsors of this video. So with all the buzz building up in the broader blockchain world, it's no wonder that established mainstream brands and figures have jumped in. That's what we're seeing everyone from Taco Bell and Nike to Gucci and Snoop Dogg <laughs> diving into the space, launching and selling their own NFTs. But it's important to note that we are in the early days of the NFT revolution. In fact, we're entering a completely new frontier with the advent of fractionals NFTs. Why fractionalization of asset is hardly a novel idea. We've seen this used everywhere from real estate to stocks. The concept is nevertheless allowing investors to pull their resources and gain exposure to assets they would have not have been able to otherwise. So how does this work exactly? Well, while I may now have $69 million to buy that record-breaking NFT I just mentioned, the technology enables us to easily subdivide that NFT into say 10,000 little fractions that an individual investor can own. When that NFT is sold, I could automatically, via smart contracts, be paid my share. But separately, those little fractions can be easily traded on various exchanges. This is similar to the concept of tokenization of, say, real estate that I've covered in previous explainer videos, with the difference that it is way easier with NFT as the asset is digitally native. It's also similar to the concept of some of these art funds that pull investor capital together to buy some art pieces of art, with the only difference here that the process is much more efficient, effective, transparent, and most importantly, does not require intermediaries. But now you're probably saying, Henry, I get it. I know what an NFT is, but how do I buy one and where? Great question. NFTs are available to purchase on a wide range of platforms like OpenSea, Nifty Getaways, Rarible, and many others. But since this video is sponsored by our friends at Crypto.com, why not check them out as well to discover NFTs? Not only is it easy, instant, and secure, it's quickly becoming one of the most liquid NFT marketplaces for both major celebrities and emerging artists. Here's how it works. Simply click on the link above and start browsing Crypto.com's huge library of NFTs with a variety of art, music, sports, gaming, and celebrity-themed tokens at your fingertips. They really have some great pieces, and you can subscribe so you don't never miss a drop. We're really at the beginning of the NFT revolution. Over the coming years, many everyday items will be offered as NFTs, from concert tickets and song to birth certificates and land titles. Like any other hype, there is and will be a boom and bust cycles for NFTs. One of the problems with NFTs is that unlike, say, Bitcoin or other liquid assets, their value is more difficult to determine because of the fact that these assets are non-fungible and each one of them is unique. This is similar to the large differences in value that someone or an expert determines a piece of art is worth, for example. I also believe that there's a generational issue here as well. When I speak to my students or young people in general, they're often very comfortable with owning digital-only goods. For example, many of them already own digital skins or weapons in video games, for example. The concept is often harder to grasp with older people who are used to physical assets. This is something we faced already in, in the early days of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as well. While some of the NFT's values that we're seeing are certainly inflated, perhaps driven by celebrity interest, one can argue that that's not necessarily a bad thing. The hype is generating interest, and more interest means great opportunities for people to learn and educate themselves on the space. Ultimately, a strong understanding of what an NFT is and the variety of possibilities that it creates, like the endless opportunities for artists and creators mentioned before, will lead to even more adoption from the mainstream. Hope this was a useful video. If there's any other topic you want to cover in a future explainer video, feel free to let me know in the comments below. See you all soon for another episode of Crypto Capsule Explainer Series.